Welcome to episode 20 of Ready, Set, Live. Today, we're discussing a little bit of news to us, but most importantly, just how legendary Into the Inklands looks to be. Ready, set, draw! And welcome back. Welcome. You know, it's starting to, to get a little bit better. Yes. You know, things, health, things but, yeah. no, health wise, we're all garbage, <laughs> all absolute garbage. Yeah. So one of the things about this past week, since our most recent recording, I don't know if you gave it to me or if I gave it to you or if you got it from Houston and I got it from somewhere else, but <sighs> neither of us have been on the up and up oh, health wise. No, no. And Death. you can probably tell it in our voices a little bit. I am going to try my best. Hold me to it, guys, in the comments. Uh, I'm going to try my best whenever I have to cough if I do to get away from the mic as far as possible. That way. I'm, of course, cough away from you. I'm just saying, like, I'm going to try my best to cough away from gotcha, the mic so gotcha, it's not picked gotcha, up gotcha. as much. And if you do hear a, a classic Jacob, then, you know, just just bear with me. Forgive me for a little bit. But <laughs> uh, do you know what the best medicine, because I was, like, way worse 24 hours ago. Oh, yeah. You know what the best medicine for cold and flu is? I'm going to take a random guess. Okay. Legendaries. Dayquil. No, it's, <laughs> it's Legendaries and Enchanteds. Because the moment I started seeing these cards pour in, I thought to myself, I'm going to need all the willpower and strength within me. And I'm going to need to muster up the health to discuss these cards properly. Because they were pouring in. Oh. And it was really... Oh. I feel like you, you get a legendary card and it's it's something like they the, with the design of this game, they like to make the unique mechanics yeah. and stuff legendary. So I feel like they'll always start discussion immediately on release. Like they'll have something to talk about about the oh, card. It's not just oh, great absolutely. stats, you know. But these in particular for this set have been more discussion starters <sighs> than I'm used to. Dude. So it's it's been Some great. of these have just been flat out busted. Yeah. And, and I'm all yeah. for it. <laughs> Guys, heads up. Tyler and I do not agree on some of these cards. So this As will usual. be a very friendly, cordial, respectful debate on some of these. We're looking to be a little more brief on them. We're not going to just you know spend 20 minutes on Jafar, possibly. <laughs> but uh, we're going to roll right into it after a little bit of news. A little bit of news. Yeah, just because a little bit. The, the little bit of news is the full set, as of the time of recording, has revealed. We understand that there are probably because we've only discussed this this expansion uh, or this set really truthfully, we've only discussed like seven cards of it. Yeah, and there's it's, 214 cards. Uh, you know, I'm well. Okay, yeah, no, I guess it is 214. Yeah. Well, no, no. How many how many enchanters are there? Aren't there 12? I don't, I don't know the math on top of my head. I'm just saying there's over 200 cards, and we've probably discussed faithfully. We've discussed seven of them, so we know. There will be some cards every now and then, like Friend Like Me, or like uh, Kit Cloud Kicker, or John yeah. Silver. There are some cards that are like, yeah, that's cool. I like that. But we, in the in the effort to like encapsulate the set as a whole, we feel like the legendaries are truly what give a set its identity and like what and kind of decks this it's pushing. Set is busted. Yeah, there's. We're gonna but, focus on the legendaries because we feel like that will be the most useful discussion of like. What is the game yeah. bringing? Because some of the super rares are really good. We might bring them up in discussion. Yeah. But uh, the legendaries are like the most interesting to discuss. So let's start off with a little bit of Amber. And we're going to be ranking these by uh, by a tier list. So yeah, we're going to give it like an S tier, which I feel like we should explain. B yeah. That. So S tier is, it's like... Superior. Holy cow, bonkers! Superior, yeah, tier. it's it's the superior tier. It, it's yeah. it's amazing. Card's gonna see a lot of play. It, it's it's gonna be a game changer. And a this tier is, is definitely above average. Um, it, it's gonna be a card that is going to see quite a bit of play. It might not be an absolute game changer, but it's still going to be very good. Mm -hmm. uh, B tier being basic or average. Uh, yeah, I I feel like Cl the wording can be can be dangerous here yeah. because it's like you don't want to insult anything. You don't want to insult a card. Like people who design the card are given bounds to discuss to build cards in. You know, like don't yeah. go crazy. But um, I feel like we should have a a note before we start ranking anything. One, we are not meta defining. This is uh, our opinion. analysts. Yeah, this is our opinion. So uh, opinions can be wrong, right? That's but, true. 
But th- I uh, think Jacob can a, definitely be wrong. Yeah, all the time. They deserve a little slack. Is all I'm saying. And then the second one is. All of these cards are freaking cool. Oh yeah, right? no. So it's not like this. This is not. This is not an indictment on how the card looks or, or how the. I mean, it is a little bit of an indictment on how the card plays. Yeah, but there's also assumption on yeah. how it plays because yeah. we have not gotten a chance yeah. to test. We these have. Cards. We have no idea how it plays. It's just based on our knowledge and experience. Of and I feel again. like I feel like we are giving ourselves about an hour of evidence of how dumb we look, but. There's but a that's small okay. sliver of a chance that we look like geniuses, and I'm willing to shoot my shot. So, I mean, he can shoot it. I'm just going to yeah. sit here and laugh at him. So let's start. If you do see a legendary ranked blo- below what you believe is due, tell us why in the comments. Um, Get in the comments. If you believe that we are over-evaluated or under, over-evaluating or under-evaluating, let us know. But um, I feel like our point of contention here on some of these is going to result in us kind of averaging a tier. So I'm a little worried that B is going to be like 10 oh, cards. Yeah, but, it's like a bunch of them. No. Yeah. So no, let's no, no, start. No. Let's en- enough discussion. Okay. Kida. Let's discuss <laughs> this Kida. one's this one's already one that I'm just like, okay. This is a 5 cost inkable Kida Protector of Atlantis. A three strength, five willpower, two lore, floodborn hero princess. That word right there. That's princess. that's the only part that is redeeming of this card at well, all. Let me get to the card before you start bashing it. Shift three, uh, which there are some good shift targets. There's a one drop shift There's target. Very solid shift uh, target. Perhaps we can save our future is the ability. When you play this character, all characters get minus three until the start or minus three strength until the start of your next turn. So, and it has she has been chosen. King Kasha Kim N- N- she N- has been chosen with the art by Adam Fenton. So beautiful, you did great card. on the art. Yeah, beautiful it's card, fantastic art. Looks the effect. Beautiful. I think we should save our tier ranking for the end of our discussion, so we can have a chance to sway each That's other a little fine. bit. I feel like this card opens up an avenue of like, it's it's an answer that we are adding to the list of answers to basically a board full of characters that can potentially swing into your questers, like wide boards. They typically threaten your ability to quest out in the middle to late end of the game right. so that you don't feel comfortable questing and you can, uh, you kind of get stalled where you, you've reached a point where you can't really progress the game anymore. And I feel like Kida is a unique answer because it says not just keep your stuff exerted that can be readied up, you know, with a, a Shield of Virtue or a LeFou to kind of get out of that lock. Yeah. This offers a suggestion of, no, that has zero strength until my next turn. So while mine may also have zero strength, yours cannot deal damage to mine. Right? I think that's a really, that's a worthwhile yeah. answer. And I think on mass, you can let this start your turn and then you can progress your turn later with stuff that's unaffected by her ability. But your opponent will definitely be affected unless they're playing characters with onboard effects or they're playing characters with rush that can get around her effect and can, they can have their actions done immediately. I feel like this is a pretty sweet answer. Uh, I think it's going to see play. I think this is a a good card and I'm now going to give you the floor and I may regret it. Yeah. So uh, I think this card is super mid, super mid. I, I think the, Great. You gave your opposing characters minus three until the this, this start of your next turn. That's okay. fine. Um, I, I'll say this. Okay. Great. Um, it's a shift three. So the likelihood of... You're, you're putting this on a card that wants to be... Like, just from curve, wants to be play early game, but... <laughs> is really more of a late game target, which th- that's the only redeeming quality of it being a five drop is that if you're playing it by itself, great. You're going to see that mid game mm-hmm. and that's probably going to be your best bet to play it anyway. Yeah. But the fact that that's not really where it wants to be played just leaves so much to be desired as a whole. And I just, I feel like it could have literally done anything All right, else. So- There's a way you can evaluate cards and it's like a grid format of like, is it good uh, 
whenever you're behind? Is it good whenever you're ahead? Is it good when you top deck it? Is it good whenever you have plenty of resources? I don't like, think this card is good when you're behind. Okay. I don't think this card is good when you are ahead. Uh, really? Yeah. See, I would say its weakness is it's not good when you're behind. Uh, it's it does, de- it's, it's, it's definitely, not very good at catching up because yeah. it's not like you... I mean, technically, you could play it and then you could quest with stuff to try and catch up in lore and then you could try and pres- kind of win your lore race. But they're more often than not, your opponent's then going to say, all right, well, I'll just quest with all my stuff so too. So here's, here's my reasoning of why it's not good when you're ahead. So if you're already ahead... The expectation is, is your opponent doesn't have a board in the first place. Oh, either or, either, or, either that or they are building their board. And if they are building their board, then it really means nothing because the the vast majority of the things that they're going to use to eliminate your board is not going to be char- character to character removal. It's going to be action to character removal. So the expectation that, great, you're minusing three everything it it just it feels super underwhelming for the fact that like what are you really trying to stop yeah i i think the the leeway i have with evaluating this and not putting it in some great tier is because it does it to your own characters it cannot be used offensively like yeah. it, it can't be used to say like okay i'm going to make all my trades favorable now unless you just naturally have higher strength characters than your yeah. opponent and then like you can eke through strength when theirs are all into zero i also would say amber does have a pretty decent amount of strength manipulation so maybe you can buff your characters up and then use this and now your strength is preserved a little bit through a board yeah you're really looking for that's like hope that that you're able to support but the problem is this ruins support too a little bit yeah if if you can support beforehand and then then play this yeah and then you kind of gain it that's that's notable that it can work through that it's, but I would say this is definitely like a piece of a board. It's not like a board established, like I'm a threat. Like it's, yeah, it's a combo piece to like set up your board state. But I, I think I value the, I'm going to turn all your challenging off for the turn more than you do. Yeah. I, I just, I, I just don't see it. I, I don't, so, I don't see the, the, the value in the minus, my, if it would have said minus three to all of your, of all posing characters. That's nuts. Th- like, that's great. Yeah, like, that's nuts. That's a fantastic card. One hundred percent. it would cost way more than five if that were the case. Fine. Make it a six cost shift four. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. that. I mean, honestly, that's, that's really like if, if this card is going to be playable, Make it a six cost shift four. There is and make it take everything down by three. As far as like build your, your board, stuff. uh, how it works and enables, I feel like one thing that does need to be said is there are some cards, not always an amber, but some cards that care about the strength of your opponent's stuff. Like Kit Cloud Kicker was a play him, return a, an opposing character with a strength of two or less to the, your opponent's hand. So with Kita, you could be like, okay, I'm going to take your five strength thing, go Drop put it down to two. to two, and then I'm going to combo about. Yeah. But it's kind of reinforcing how I think it's a combo ish card. Yeah. It's not really just like you put this in a starter deck and it's like, okay, that's really awkward for a little yeah. while. But it just, but whenever you build around it, like most legendaries are, I think it could be pretty good. Here's, here's what I'm going to say you give your tier list ranking. Where would you put it? I'm S all the way to D. Because I don't think we're going to get below D on any of these. Yeah, nothing in this particular. What would you put it at? Because I would put it at B personally. That's actually probably pretty close to where I would put it. So you'd probably put it at like the bottom of B. Yeah, but I would no, put it at the top. Yeah, you, you're putting it on okay. the top of B. Oh, if I'm, we can agree on a B, I'm gonna write it down. I, I'm gonna write I, it down. I think I think taking Akita is is B. It's because it's like I said, it's super mid. It, okay, it's, it's I would say mid is the, C personally. <sighs> I, I, as far as cards go in general, I would say mid is like a C. Because we can rank these against each other. But we can also rank them on like how much we like. I've, them, I've, know? if, if mid is C, then it's C. I think B. Let's say B minus. Can we, can we say B minus? <sighs> B minus? Okay, B minus. Put it in the books, folks. All right, what is it? Uh, what, what's the day here? Just for, <laughs> for, for clarity's sake. Thursday, February 15th, 2024. Kita is a B minus. Yeah, sure. All right. Next up, Tyler, you want to go ahead and read sure. the next one? So the next card, wait, I thought, are we not going to get the voice of Anthony for this particular card? Because I feel like 
Anthony, are you there? You, Anthony, you don't, you don't need my voice. What? <laughs> you don't need my voice. But I do like I, I do kind of like. But this you card. like this card? I, yeah. I lean more towards uh, Jacob. Honestly, I oh, I, yeah. I like I forgot the, about I like the, about Kita about yeah Kita. Okay, that, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I definitely like lean towards more Jacob because I, I I can see in the late game, and like it's super situational. But like you just need that extra level of protection. You just need a little bit of extra help, like you said. But uh, most interaction is going to be like action or item or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this cuts out on one extra little thing that could get rid of this character that I really need to keep. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah, for sure. So I would say, would you agree with B minus? I agree. Okay. All right. Okay. So thank you. I forgot to mention, guys, we do. We don't have a producer cam just quite yet, but Anthony is available on mic at the producer's desk. I'm hoping we can get a, a little funny name or something like the Cave of Wonders or something that we can call <laughs> to you. And maybe every now and then just the Cave of Wonders. You know, what, what does Anthony say? But, Who dares but to until then, stumble. we're just going to call on Anthony for his opinions. But we okay. will move on to the next card. So, Perdita is, is. Okay. So, we're talking about Perdita. Perdita is a six drop, uninkable. Uh, she is a storyborn hero. Storyborn hero. Uh, storyborn hero. She's a 1-6. She's a devoted mother. Uh, and her ability... Is, oh, and she's two lore. Two lore. That's useful. Important. Uh, so her ability says, uh, come along, children, <coughs> when you play this character, and whenever she quests, you may play a character with cost two or less from your discard for free. I love those words. Because we all know how we feel yeah. about free. Flavor text? Uh, her pups will follow her anywhere and the artist credit is uh, Daphne Def Tozum and Livio Cacciatore thank you very much for your wonderful art you I will great. say all of these arts have a frame break in some way this is a subtle one with the leaves yeah but I love the touch uh, it even extends into the text box like we noted with Jim Hawkins last episode all beautiful it kind of gives legendaries that little extra spice uh, Namari still doesn't have one what are your thoughts on Perdita as far as Let's start with just playability in general. We kind of trend that way anyways. I, I think her playability in her own deck mm -hmm. is solid. Yeah. I think it's very solid. Um, I've looked more at some of the other <clears throat> uh, the other 101 Dalmatians. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucky's good. Some really good stuff out yeah. there. Like, I, I, a little, so They kind of feel a little bit Seven Dwarves-y. Like, yeah. Where some of them are like, wow, look at me. And then some of them are like, yeah, I exist. <laughs> it's like it like the that's strength, a lot of the seven the strength dwarves. manipulation is something that i'm like it's there but stuff like lucky where you can like oh i gotta pull up lucky i'm gonna be i'm gonna frustrate myself if i don't actually um, do it. Tell, tell me your thoughts on but, perdita the but yeah, I no i think i think perdita as a whole i think <clears throat> i think she's got a lot of potential uh i think that depending on the deck that you're playing her in oh <clears throat> man goodness gracious bless you um Full sound effects. This is an ASMR stream. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, um, I think, just like I was saying, like, I think she fits in a certain deck type. Oh, yeah. Um, anything that has a lot of, like, really cheap stuff that comes in, uh, I think, funny enough, Ant, I think uh, you have a solid chance of recreating Stitch Turbo in, uh, <laughs> in Amethyst Amber. Yeah. Like, I think that this fits like wholeheartedly into that deck because it you want to quest with it and you want to pull your two drops that your opponent went ahead and killed or I'm sorry banished my bad <laughs> my bad we'll cut that uh, but uh no, you, you you want you you want your put you want the stuff that your opponent your opponent has banished to be able to come back for sure I, that I, does this. I like the idea of uh it's introducing, you know, that recursion play style. Like, mm -hmm. as soon as we start seeing effects of when it comes back from this guard, um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. it hits the field or, or something like that. Yeah. Like, shout out to Alex Avard. We got yeah. there, bud. There's, we finally got there. I would say, as far as, like, the recursion theme, uh, in Magic the Gathering, they would call it graveyard effects. Yeah. But in this game, it's just the discard. Yep. So we're going to just say discard, discursion. Uh, <laughs> dis discard recursion. Discursion has been one thing with bringing it to hand. 
There's been plenty of stuff that's been able to get stuff back from the hand. It may have been like subtype based, like items or actions specifically or characters specifically, but bringing stuff back to your hand can maintain card advantage, but you still have to invest ink to get it back out. So it's not really a good like, bam, gotcha type thing. It, is, yeah, it, this doesn't, is. it doesn't hurt quite as bad to play against because it's like, okay, well, I need, I know that's coming, but I have a little time to prepare for it, especially if it's something expensive. This kind of has the built-in part where it's not going to be something that expensive, but just because things aren't expensive in this game does not mean they're not impactful. Because I know for sure there are some two-cost rush characters, and there's some two-cost characters that have uh, really good uh, uh, just straight-up on play abilities that even if they're just too lore, right? Like even if like like the new Simba or the, the Pinocchio from set two, three lore characters, it's like, bam, deal with that. It's coming back. And even if you banish it, unless you take care of Perdita, it's coming right back again. Yep. So I don't have to invest a card from hand. And at 1-6, that is a it, beefy yeah, character. It can take it's a little be- bit. Yeah. In Amber, there's some locations that are pretty cool about buffing willpower too. Uh, the Pride Lands got introduced. Uh, oh, there's some great locations. It's I'm pretty so cool. excited. I will say to call back to Lucky, like I was saying, it's a four-cost uninkable, the 15th puppy. Kind of a bummer that's a four. I mean, it, it, but this effect is worth it though. Two strength, three willpower, one lore. Good as new, uh, exert to reveal the top three cards of your deck. You may put each character card with cost two or less into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Yeah, that's pretty good. Puppy love, whenever this character quests, if you have four or more other characters in play, your other characters get plus one lore this turn. So it rewards a wide board. It looks for two cost or less things. It rewards multiple of it. Yeah. Dal- Dalmatian puppy, the generic, you can play up to 99 of these or whatever. Yeah, you're not going to As many 99. as you want. They're all two cost. Yes. Uh, so Perdita works with it. He, Lucky works with it. Pongo helps find two cost uh, characters from the top of your deck. Like oh, yeah. It is spicy. And it's definitely one of those decks that I think. The deck if, has some ability. Yeah, even if it's not like a man, I'm going to go to a tournament and I'm going to blow some people out of the water with it. It is very much... It's a flavor win. A flavor win deck and it's a locals deck star to me. Oh, for sure. I see the guy... The thing is, it's kind of telegraphed. Like, if you see someone who dares to put 99 cards in their deck, it is telegraphed from the start because you're going to see a giant, probably Dalmatian polka-dotted sleeved up deck. If it's not, how It's like a foot high, but yeah, it's going to be really cool. I would say Perdita, though, I'm so glad it doesn't just say puppies. Yeah, because I'm glad it's generic. I'm, I think yeah, it needed to be generic works. to be able to be playable, like mm-hmm. legitimately playable. But I, I think overall, I think it works. This is also one of those good cards with really unique abilities that I would say, yeah, I'm probably going to play four of that. Yeah. Because it's sometimes it's not always the case. Like the ability doesn't really work well with itself. Yeah. But oh my gosh, Perdita's yeah, no, sweet. It's solid. I'm going to give her an A, though, yeah. because it's not like blanket across no, the board. No, it's, it's not, it's not S tier. It's not, I'm going to absolutely break the game. It's, yeah. it's, I'm good enough to be played in certain decks and be worth it. Yeah. And, and it's really good in its own style of deck. So for that reason, A tier, I'm going with it. Yeah. I agree. Anth gives Anthony, the, the thumbs think? up for the A tier. Okay. All right. So I'm going to read the next one. Oh, you know gosh. what? You can read the next one. I know you love it. I'll let you read the next one. This card is ridiculous. I, I'm going to just go ahead and tell you it's an S I don't think we're going to have to spend too much time no, on this card. No, it's going to take it all of two seconds. Um, so the card that we're talking about, everybody already knows. Uh, it's Jafar. Uh, this is Jafar Striking Illusionist. He is a seven-drop inkable. He's a four-five Floodborne Villain Sorcerer because sorcerers are getting really good right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a shift-five. Um, Which there are good shift targets. Yeah, really solid shift target. Um, also evasive, because <laughs> why? We already talked about this in the last podcast, that evasive was a really is, good is a really, really good, good card. Word. Really really good keyword here. Uh, and My then, favorite word other than cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I freaking love cake. Uh, this card has its cake and eats it too. Because yep. uh, its final, <laughs> its ability is power beyond measure. Because why not? Uh, during your turn, while this character is exerted, whenever you draw a card, gain one lore. Why? Why? Here's here's something, okay? One little word of, we have a chance, like, to, to deal with it. Because it says while it's exerted, it is something that you would have to have combos established to, to not have a turn to at least do something about it, yeah. right? By that point in the game, 
more often than not, there is an answer, even if it's not clean. Evasive means that even if you can exert it yourself, you're going to have a hard time just challenging into it. But that is the time of the game where maybe Dragonfire is in play. It's the time of the game where maybe Along Came Zeus is in play. I'm going right? to be real with you. Once this card comes down, the game is over. How? how? I've, I've actually already talked to a buddy of mine. I, I talked to our buddy Todd. Yeah. And he already came up with a combo that once the card comes down, the game is over. Okay. Is the combo have to do with the binding contract uh, to no, exert it, it? it? No. It comes with uh, the Bayou. The Bayou? Yeah. The Bayou location. The one where like, you draw a card and discard a card? Okay. Enlighten me, because I'm pretty sure that was like a Sheriff of Nottingham question, like thing for me. The, like, what was So apparently there's a card that says... I don't know if it, if it's like I can you help gain you one lore. Like when you gain a lore, you draw a card. Yeah, so uh, there is a card that says Sheriff of Nottingham whenever you uh, discard a card. Oh, man. this you're, Okay. All right. I'm going to cut until we figure out this combo he's talking about I because think, I need to know. I think I, I think I actually have it. I think I have it in my, in my stuff. Hold on. Okay. So... We had to take a break because I didn't want to do too much thinking in front of everybody. Yeah. But, it, but that, that was technically a different ink combo. Yeah, it was a different, okay. yeah, different ink combination. Steel. Yes. But, but either way, this is so easily exploitable with cards. Like, this is this is going to be the moment where they're going to have to ban a card. Or if you I, think either that, either that or limit I, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, that, see. we'll see. Because a whole new world with this card, if you have multiples in your hand, it's not going to work. I, but if you have at least one copy in your hand... You might and find you another one. And sing it, you're, the likelihood yeah. of you finding another well, one is very high. Well, like I was saying, though, you can't do that. The tourney's played unless you shift, you shift it. it. If you shifted this and your the Jafar underneath was dry, then, <clears throat> then you can make things happen immediately, and it's, it's a problem. I put a meme up on our YouTube and on Twitter where it was a camel in the desert with its back being broken by a giant straw. And it was Jafar on the straw and a whole new world on the camel because this is the card that makes a whole new world feel like, oh, we're just winning the game now, okay? Yeah. It's the straw that broke the camel's back. That being said, the Jafars you can shift onto, while they are decent, none of them to me are like, oh my gosh, that's going to be really hard to interact with. You know, because none of them are technically evasive. None of them have ward. So it's not like there's a guarantee you just can't do anything. You know, it's a little bit telegraphed, a little bit, unless you're playing with morph, and then it's not. But then you can't play a whole new world, so we'll see. But that's, at that point, you're playing a completely different deck yeah. entirely, and that deck is also good. Yeah, I like I like this Jafar. Whole new world aside, that's been talked into the ground. I like this Jafar straight up just... With friends on the other side. Yeah. Like, just with casual draw. In a steel deck where you have uh, stuff like Ransack or stuff like the Simba or Cinderella that just draws you a card and discards a card, it turns those cards into, like, something new, right? It works with the Sheriff of Nottingham, like you're saying. It works with the Bayou. Like, any th anytime you're just doing the act of drawing a card, regardless, it also says, now gain one lore. I like that straight out the gate. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. This, this card, though, I will say, it is the first card in a long time, probably since Giant Fairy Tinkerbell, when during a set's evaluation, I said, oh, so that's the best card in the set. That's the one yeah. right there. I did not have that reaction with with sad with Tragic Hero Beast. No, and I don't think anybody did. I don't think a lot of people did. I think, I think people realized it was going to be good, but people were going to be like, oh, Tragic Beast is the best card in the set? Oh, okay. Like, that wasn't really a frequent opinion, but this is one of those like, eh, eh. Eh, yeah, eh. it's the emergency. But, it's yeah. it's the little kid in the back of the bus saying, and, yeah. I'm in danger. I just, I like the design. The art is fire. fire. Yeah, it no, is for sure. so good. But I want to tamper my expectations out of pure optimism because I'm hoping this card does not just warp the entire set. It's going to. I hope not. There, there's I at least say, one though, other card in, in all of this that 100% we're both going to agree on because it's the second best card in the set. Yeah, it's just being held back by held back by its own color. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. 
But this card's already. I, in but a I'm good questioning place. whether or not. We're, and but this is already so good. Yeah. That this on top is like, bam. Yeah. You know, in Inklands, we're here. I, I'm. I'm gonna be so real. It, I'm, I'm gonna be real with everybody. Okay, villains. Looks scary. It's it's gonna be one of the best decks. Period. You agree with S tier? Yes, a hundred percent. This card yeah. S tier. It is going to warp the format around itself. It, and to be fair, it's Jafar. The sad of part course, to me is before he wants we move to on. It. Before we move on, or before I ask, actually, I forgot. I want I want to hear Anthony's points. Anthony, do you have anything you want to add to this card? Like, are you excited, or what's the deal? Are you terrified? Well, of course, it's purple. So you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the answer is it's purple. Yeah, the it, art on oh, it okay. is insane, and the effect on it is it's it's pretty good. Yeah. E Much equally. props to Nicola Saviori. That was fantastic job by you. So yeah, it's purple. So Anthony loves it. But yeah, I just want to say, uh, you know, like I said, I like to remain optimistic with the card. Uh, I, I want to hope that the card is 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 just purely fun. When I get I get a little sad when I see car effects that are this good because it's kind of like whenever we would play Magic and there would be like a card that was just standalone problematic, it meant that you could no longer just have fun with the card, Yeah. right? Like if you built a multiplayer deck and you have Jafar in there and you're like, I just play friends on the other side, like I just want to like casually get some more. It's an evasive, it's an evasive deck. What I mean, it's but, an evasive. But you're still the problem. And, but But it's a card that's like, and the moment it hits the board, anyone you're playing against can be like, oh, oh, so, so you're you, playing that deck, huh? You know, it's, it, you don't get any slack. You no, know what I mean? You don't. A little sad you there, will, but... You will never get slack for playing this yeah. card. So, uh, it, it is, is what a, it is. It's a but we're going to move on to, I think, another very cool uh, it's very Amethyst solid. Legendary. It is Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. A five-cost inkable, two strength, three willpower, with two lore... Storyborn, storyborn sorcerer villain. Already great with Another sorcerer. sorcerer. It has the ability dark knowledge. Whenever this character quests, you may draw a card. Sweet. And well, works with the card that we just talked yeah, about. And it has the ability divination. During your turn, whenever you draw a card, you may move one damage counter from a chosen character to a chosen opposing character. I'd like to point out this is not healing. It's like, yeah, it's not like the act of healing, but it does. It does it, it let doesn't, you... It doesn't count as healing. So, like, when when a card says that, like, that you, you heal the card for whatever, and, you, like... Well, I think the way that Lorcana phrases it, though, does line up really well with it, because they say remove damage counters. So, remove damage counters would be the same as moving damage counters. Oh. So, it would work. But either way, I think okay. that this card, with well, a really cool part about it, is, if I'm not mistaken... I think it gets around resist. I think. Yes, yes, this does. Uh, because it's not, it's not yeah. dealing damage. It's moving the counter itself. Yeah, I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need to, to, to fact check myself. But tell me what. While I'm doing that, tell me what you think of Maleficent, just as like fitting in the Amethyst decks that you're familiar I with, think, or what you think it's gonna be. I think this card as a whole works really well with really just what with what Amethyst wants to do. Mm -hmm. I think you're seeing a lot of things with Amethyst. Like you see a lot of rush now with, uh, with like Zeus and Rafiki and, and uh, Madame Mim. So you're yeah. going to, you, you see cards that work really well with it already. And I've, I feel like we've talked about this where Amethyst feels like it fits with almost every other color. Amethyst is just the generically consistent color. Yeah. So it, it automatically lends itself to, you want to try something out? We'll throw Amethyst with it, and then maybe you'll see it more often so you can achieve what you want to achieve. So, in, in other words, Ant, you were right. Purple the best. You got it. It <laughs> facts, hit. Facts. It, it, yeah, facts. 100%. Uh, but yeah, no, dude. It's. I, I think the only thing that I'm kind of upset about is that it's a five drop that's two, three. I think the like the stat line is a little bit underwhelming. Um, because it's literally, it costs two more and yet it, it's, it's only one stat higher than its predecessor of the three drop Maleficent. That's two, two. I was just about yeah. to say that. I wish it was like a shift or something. I yeah. Don't know. I, I kind of, yeah. I kind of wish that it was a shift. I kind of wish that it had a little bit more power behind it, but I, I almost understand why, because when you have stats like this, when you have a character that 
plays the way that it plays already, uh, it's really hard to just be like, okay, like if we added any more to it, it'd be a problem. For sure. So the, the second effect is is solid by itself. Yeah, yes. I, I think that with the second effect, I could not find a clarifying answer easily online. So I'm going to give up and I'm going to assume that it does work with resist. I don't think it's damage dealt. I think you're just moving the damage. Yeah. If that is the case where resist does stop it, I think this got like nerfed pretty hard. Yeah. Um, I, because resist is really good. Yeah. And I think I it's going to be pretty prevalent. Don't but. think I think I think it plays around resist. Yeah. So. Uh, I think I think it'd have to go with the wording of like, does it? Are you placing the damage? Like, is it dealing the damage? It's, I don't think so. I don't, but it's not. I I don't think that yeah. it's dealing. I think it's just. I moving. think it's moving. Yeah. So if it does get around deal. resist, it's pretty sweet. Uh, I wish I should have known this by now. I'm sorry, guys, because we had Mama Odie like a long time ago that would have yeah, had this question like a answered. billion years. And, but yeah. uh, but either it's way, okay. I feel like the secondary effect of this is the gravy effect. Yes. And the potato effect is the first one. Yeah. Where no, you 100%. get the card draw whenever she quests. And it's just blatantly replacing itself and providing value. So if and it you does it can, every turn. Yeah, it's if, it's a really good card. Yeah, if you can find a way to maximize the moving damage, like by playing Ruby with it and doing self damage, or by challenging, taking damage, planning on taking it off, like we would do with with stuff like an Amber. So this is just an upgrade for yeah, the, for, for Ruby for, yeah, for Ruby I, Amethyst. Oh, I just. I just really feel like at five, it's not a shift, so it's going to come down a little later. That is a time where like you're Ruby playing with the struggles in the in the mid to late, where yeah. like they're they're trying to find things to play at five because they have plenty of things to play at four, and they have plenty of the plenty of things to play at three, which also means that if they have plenty of things to play at three, they also have plenty of things to play at six. Yeah. So the the problem has always been okay. What do we play at five? Yeah, and. I just, there's not, there's not anything. I, I, uh, from a guy who's played Ruby <laughs> Amethyst, trust me, yeah. there's not. Well, I think there's not much else to be said about Maleficent as a whole, other than like, I would say solid card is solid card. Yes. Uh, it has synergy with the generic effects you already ha want to do in card games. You, you are going to draw cards, you know? So whenever you draw a card, it could be the very first card you start with. Right? The, 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 oh my gosh. Words. The card you draw at the start of your turn. Start of your turn, move a damage. <laughs> yes, move a damage. So play, that does kind of put you on notice of like. Play friends on the other side, move two damage. Yeah, if this card and existing, banished. just unexerted, readied up on your board, this card existing says, be careful of the damage you do to me because, bare minimum, when I start my turn, one of it's coming back. Yeah. So I like that effect. It, just. On a, on a card, that's if pretty sweet. If you push me down, you better hope that I stay down. Yeah, exactly. With Mama Odie, it was like whenever she quests, you can move damage. But that's like, she has to quest. Yeah. Yes, it's still threatening of like, if you don't deal with her, it's coming right back. But I feel like this is a little more consistent. Oh, yeah. And whenever you like quest, you get to draw a card. That's it's just that's really just good. so good. It's generically good. Yeah. Like, All right, so I'm going to give Maleficent an A. Would you argue anything else? I I wouldn't argue with an A, but I I want to say that it's on the top end of A. So an A plus. I would say would A say. plus and A plus. Are are you feeling a little bit on the S tier just because? Nah, uh -uh. no, I don't okay. think it's good enough to be S tier. I I think A A is fine. Okay, you think A no A plus. All right, Tyler, I'm erasing the plus. You've been outvoted. <sighs> that's that's it's terrible. just an A. It doesn't stand out enough. It's I get like a it. I do. Piece. I get it. All right. Now we get to get to a contentious <laughs> oh, no. piece of cardboard. Milo Thatch, a seven cost uninkable king of Atlantis. Four strength, four willpower, three lore, shift four. And he has the ability. Well, he's a floodborne hero king, by the way. Yeah, he is. And he has the ability to take them by surprise. When this character is banished, return all opposing characters to their players' hands. You don't know what you're tampering with. I'm going to let you talk about this card so that that way the other two people that think that this card is amazing can go ahead and rebut you. Okay, I'm going to say that we have very limited time <laughs> and, that, and that we should not focus all of our efforts onto arguing for Milo Thatch and instead on later cards. However, Milo Thatch is a cool card. I think he is a trap card because it's a, trap. a card that gives you 
the ability to be proactive and be uh, take initiative in the game, make a powerful effect on play, threaten more powerful stuff. That's like the ideal card. This guy, he can be used proactively in a perfect scenario, but more often than not, once you've gotten three lore for him, you are going to give your opponent the agency to do what they feel is best for them on their turn. They can trigger his effect on their turn on their terms. So while generically returning all characters to the board uh, of your opponents to their hand, while generically in a lot of imaginary situations, that is like bonkers. And it seems like, oh my gosh, how could that not be good? The problem is the card does not say may. So whenever it, he whenever he is banished, it's done. So it's going off and your opponent can play things that they generically definitely want to get back. So I can play stuff like Genie, bounce something to your hand. I can play something like Maleficent Monstrous Dragon, banish something else. And then I can, pl or I can play uh, something like Elsa, uh, keep some of your stuff exerted. I can play uh, just generically good, like, you know, Maleficent Sorceress, draw a card, uh, goat, get, get a lore. And then while it may not be- And you be, gain a lore when that card goes yeah, back in your hand. While, while it may not be super advantageous to like devote a bunch of ink and then send it all back to your hand, it's definitely not like a strictly bad thing. You know what I mean? And a lot of cards people put in their decks are cards that have very good uh, impactful abilities on play because that's what that's what you look for in a card is I want this to immediately affect the board. So Milo Thatch, I looked at it and I even I even like made a case for it, uh, it with with some of my friends. Like I I made a case for it. Like guys, is this card not nuts? And I was talked down off the cliff, and I was I was pretty much like at the end of it, like yeah, I still think it's cool, but like I totally see how an uninkable seven drop that maybe can shift might not be strictly nuts. Like it, it, it might just be, all right, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that this card is better than Kita. Better than Kita. That's a very low bar. That's like I, a, I, that's a hurdle over a, I, over I, a stool. I, I'm aware, but I, I think it's heads above Kita. Like, oh. I, I don't think that it's... Okay, well, for the sake of argument, then, I would say this card belongs as a C-. That's What it. would you put at? I would at least put it at... I would either put it at a B plus or an A-. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And, the, and okay. my reasoning is, okay. is that for the deck that this card wants to be in, it does not matter that it's a seven drop or a shift four. Like this, this card wants to be in green, red. Like it's, it works best in green, red. It's the deck that, that it plays best in. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's got the most workability in that deck. It, it does not fit anywhere else because green well, already be an wants, argument to be like below average then. If it's only fitting in one ink combination? No, because the that the ink combination that it fits in works really, really well. Like it's not just like a oh, okay, like it's it's, it's like an evasive deck? What's the deal? So the the deck that it fits well in is a is a challenger like Ruby like Ruby Emerald deck. Okay. Like the whole point is that news to me, guys. I'm just saying. Yeah. So the reason why is so when you shift on it you're you're already ready up like you can go ahead and quest you get your three and if your opponent's board is already a problem like okay great you've swung with something already mm -hmm. my my plan is is that i have something like a lafu or a fan the flames or a uh, shield of virtue that i automatically ready my milo back up and mm -hmm. I go ahead and swing it into something, and boom, your board is gone. Like, I no longer have to worry about your stuff. I've gotten the value that I already want out of the three. Like, I, I've already gotten what I need out of the character mm -hmm. as it stands. And then I get even more value because now I've removed every problem that you have had on the board. I don't have to deal with it anymore. But it's coming back, though. That's the but, problem. But that... The, the most likely scenario is that that's going to take multiple turns for them to get back to where they were. Like, 
Uh, every maybe. everything that you were saying, like as far as like the big stuff, like that's a nine drop. Like that's not a like you're not rebuilding well, even, a, a, even a, like a a board in one turn when you have like a, a, a nine drop, a five drop, a three drop, a two drop. Like that's one hundred percent. Like if you play this at okay, turn here's, four, here's like, that's here's a, the scenario though that I think is more realistic than just like Maleficent Monstrous Dragon. I think the realistic scenario would be. Let's say you're playing against Ruby Amethyst. They play a goat. It's like it's it's on their like you played this generously on turn six, right? Turn five or turn six. Yeah. Okay. You quested with it. It's now starting turn six or seven, right? By that time on the board, I have like a couple rabbits, and I have a goat in my hand, and I have a mem fox. I can return a rabbit, play the mem fox. Play maybe the goat for seven on my seventh ink. Yeah. And then rabbit, I could, I could, or I could take my fox and then rush it into your Milo. That's and then if the Milo is exerted. Like, it is exerted. But you want it to be exerted. Right. But I don't want it to be exerted on, my on turn? your turn. You want it to I be, want it to be exerted on my you're turn. You're thinking of him as the Urukai with the bomb on his back at Helm's Deep. Like he's going to go blow stuff up. Yeah. He, okay. It, that's. That's the because that's the only way you can play the card. But I feel like that's so. I just feel like it's seven cost uninkable. It has to shift to be like coming out early. That is very very uh, aggressive with him. Of like, oh, it, I'm gonna have him at the right aggressive. time, and I'm gonna make sure that you have a board that I want to send everything back. Now I will say this: the one if you card could just that, clear the board, just clear the board. You know the, what I mean? The one card that helps this a lot is uh, the Jolly Roger. Because it gives every character that's at that location rush. Yeah, I I don't know about that. I just so okay, we it, need to move on. We need to move on. I'm gonna argue that Milo Thatch is a C, and you can try. And Anthony can be a tiebreaker here. What, Please be a tiebreaker. What Anthony. you what you thinking, bud? The more I listened to Jacob, the more <laughs> I went yes. down. Who yes, who but, played in a tournament? Just recently, and almost beat the national champion of of Kaijudo. Oh gosh, who, who? he won that tournament it wasn't too. Him. Don't speak. I don't know, man. Like the more he talked about it, the more I I, I came down. Because when, when I first read it, I was like, oh yeah, S yeah. S tier baby. <laughs> but he's right. Like I mean, I think with any car can any car can be played around. Honestly, yeah. But. For this card, I'm not I'm not playing it when you only have rabbits and goats on board. That's true. I'm only playing this when you know you got three things that I'm really not trying to like let Tinkerbell on the board. Type yeah, the situation. yeah. Like and a lot of those you got cards, problem cards. Yeah, and a lot of cards like you're gonna do that anyways. You're just gonna play that genie anyways at some point. So hey, yeah. if if you get it back, hey, the genie's gone and them other three things that was on the board is gone too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like this is kind of a I'm I'm trying to slow you down some. You you a little too far ahead. I need to slow you down. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So okay. I'm, I'm. I thought you were talking to me it, for a second. I no no like, no. <laughs> it's it it. Okay. I, I feel okay. like you sit kind of in a combination of both of us, where you see the value. Which is why I think he should rank it. Go ahead what, and rank where, it so we can get on to. I'm Ursula. going B B. I'll take it. I'll take B. We'll put it above Kita. We'll give it a B. Let's just let it be known for the for the 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 giant library of quotes. Jacob thought it was a C and I can't wait to be wrong because if I'm wrong, that means I can listen to you more often for card analysis. There you go. Okay. Ursula, Tyler, give it, give us Ursula. Okay. So Ursula uh, is called Ursula deceiver of all. She's a three drop inkable. She's got two uh, strength and three willpower. She's a dreamborn villain sorcerer, lots of sorcerers. Uh, and she, her ability first off one lore, just one. But Doesn't her ability matter. makes up for it uh, because her ability says, what a deal and what a deal it is. Uh, whenever this character sings a song, you may play that song again from your discard for free. I love those words. Into the Inklands, favorite word of all time. Free. Then what's, free, the, rest of the, what's the rest free, of the ability? Free. Uh, and then put put it on the bottom of your deck after you play right. it. So, so we're not, not, be, not yeah. only are you playing it for free, you're recurring it and putting it back into your deck. Which some would say, like, if you can't get it back, it's le it's technically less accessible. That's the worst place to put it if it's being put in your deck. But getting to use a song twice is nuts. And she, yeah. ha 
She has to sing it, which means this is relegated to all songs that cost three or less. That's okay. However, I would be shocked if through the next few sets, we don't see an item like a microphone that gives a character singer five or singer four or singer six. Yeah. Where they can sing any song or, or you something. Or can increase the cost of the character just yeah, in general. Just temper any way they would have to word it to make it fair. A microphone or a loudspeaker or something, an amphitheater location. Characters here get singer five, something like that. Oh, Stuff that would be like good. that would immediately take this card to the moon. Yeah. Because it's not like double B preparing would be like good. Unless you're playing against Mufasa, then it is. But um <laughs> play it again. But the the generic, let's just take, speak in the realm of three cost or less. Ursula, her most frequent song is going to be Friends, Friends on, on the, the Other, other side. side. but Friends on the Other Side, draw four. Yeah, but I do think that like one of the cards they revealed in this set but between our last recording was Bare Necessities. Oh, yeah. Bare Necessities is a two cost inkable song uh, that can sing. And basically you get to look at your opponent's hand and choose a non-character card there and make them discard it. Ursula singing that makes them pitch two cards to the discard of your choice. So that is mega good against control decks. Mega good against those steel S whole new world decks. Sudden chill. Yeah, so I think that deck, this deck we're talking about right now, sudden chill, bare necessities. Um, I mean, it's not a song, but on stuff a roll. like bosses on a roll. That's a different color combo, but I'm thinking lemon lime here. That color combo is what's keeping the ruby amethyst Ruby, hey, the okay. amethyst so what's steel. What's the other amethyst card that she plays? Well, a boss is on a roll. I'm saying that's an amethyst card, though. I'm Isn't speaking this... towards discard. Oh, okay. Emerald, amber, discard. So that okay. that's the color combo that's keeping ruby amethyst in check. Ruby amethyst steel in check. It's what's keeping the very song heavy, draw dependent, very board heavy, control song dependent yeah. decks in check because a lot of those decks are going to be, they, do, they, they finish their mulligan, they keep it be prepared. Because you need it. Yeah. They finish their mulligan. They keep a whole new world. They keep a grab your swords. They keep a let the storm rage on. Heck, in the mirror, they keep a bare necessities. You you can play so favorably into a lot of decks that are currently strong. Even without her, they're gonna see the songs will see play. It's just to me, this card takes there's a high volume of good songs. This takes those songs and says, DJ Khaled, another one. And I love that. Ursula and DJ Khaled. That is the team up I did not expect in into Look the Inklands. You played yourself. Yeah. You play you played <laughs> yourself. Make your choice. <laughs> no, I I think Ursula is mighty good and we can move on, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's sweet. It's, I'm it's this, hard not to I'm gonna say A plus just because I think that we're, we're, I, we're I calling think there's, S really, really high just for friends and like very necessities. Honestly, I, th I think that there may be an argument for an S. I, I think S minus. Anthony, I, I had to stick more towards A because it's, I don't think it's good enough by itself. Yeah, to be it's, it requires it's, other it's, cards. It does require other cards, but just what it does on its own. When it hits the board, though, it is can't a sing problem. songs. That's true. So I would say A plus because it like enables very, A very, plus. very strong. I'll things. live with it. A plus. Okay. A plus for Ursula. Now we, we're honestly going to get through about half of these pretty quickly, guys. I don't want to waste your time with some of these cards. I'm very sad because Ruby got a little bit of the, the uh, shaft. The shaft with strength of cards. I hope I'm wrong on Hydra, but Hydra is the it's Ruby legendary, mid. a six it's cost mid. uninkable. Lethal Snake, Storyborn, with the ability, oh, it has six strength and five willpower, two lore, with the ability, watch the teeth. When this character is I damaged. watch the teeth. You gonna talk right over the card. Sure did. <laughs> when this character is damaged, deal the same amount of damage to a chosen opposing character. And the art is wonderful by Joachim Van... Joachim Van Gool. Gool. Oh, dang. Well... I love the card art. I love the flavor of the card. Yeah. I like the way it like it's it's threatening damage right back. And what, what the problem I have with there it there we are is for one, this doesn't feel like a very legendary effect to me. This feels like a super rare effect. But the the problem I have is the way 
characters like this get dealt with is by any means necessary of not dealing damage to them, and there are plenty of them. Um, if what we said earlier was true about moving damage, not counting as damage dealt, then this gets way worse because you can move the damage onto him and he's not going to do a thing. But the best case scenario is he takes a well, lot when it's of damage. damaged. Yeah. Um, maybe it counts. Maybe. If it, even, even if it does count, you're only ever going to do five to something across unless or all at once it. unless you heal it. It's got to be healed. Um, that being said, I I understand it. it. It's not like a bad card in my opinion. It just seems to me like you're going to quest with it and then hope they can't deal with it efficiently. But that's the case for a lot of cards, right? Like that's the case for a lot of things of like, I'm going to, it get, like I said with Milo, it gives your opponent, opponent agency. If they can let it go this thing, if they can genie it back to your hand, if they can yeah, just drag and fire mid. it, it's just very mid. It doesn't yeah. do a thing. So I, I get worried about cards that are uninkable and require specific scenarios. I, I think we're good on this card. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's pretty easy I to say. I think it's a C. I, I would, honestly, I think there's even a statement that no, it could be No, it can still pop off. It can pop off still. And self-damage, like you can damage yourself in Ruby. It can still get C some combo. Minus. Teeth and Ambitions makes it does four damage or something. Think about it. C minus. I'm gonna say C plus. Anthony? I completely agree with the C plus because it is it's forcing your opponent to use that let it go yeah. or that whatever. An average out to C. Something else. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna stick with C plus. You've been outwrote outvoted. You reserve don't don't you can't erase what is the ink is dry. It's been there for a turn. Okay. We've already discussed Jim Hawkins. Uh, we discussed it last episode. Yes, we did. Uh, I do want to add there are a couple of locations. Yeah, that got all the introduced. locations in that are in good colors are fire, and this yeah. card is going to be amazing. So some of the some of the locations, the Jolly Roger is a one cost uninkable location. Two to move there, five willpower. Characters gain rush while here. Yeah, and it has all pirates move there for free. Hey, he'll move. He's not a pirate, but he'll move there whenever you play the location. <laughs> he'll move there for free anyway. Uh, the other. The sweet location is the RLS Legacy Solar Galleon. Four cost, uninkable, three to move there, eight willpower. Not for him. But it's four, so he can play it for free whenever you play Jim Hawkins. And it has, this is our ship, characters gain evasive while here. Uh, <laughs> two lore on that location. And it also has heave together now. If you have a character here, you may pay two less to move a character of yours here. Boom. Yeah, this Boom. is sweet. Giving and evasive. Then on top of that, then on top of that, I'm I'm telling you, Ruby Steel is gonna love this because then you have the map of Treasure Planet and you already make characters one less to cost. To move. The, so that's an you, exert ability though, right? Yes. Yeah. I think. I think it's no, it's exert to make a location cost less. Characters move there one less, less I think, for, yes. inherently. So automatically cost three less to put your character there. Oh, look at that. It costs three to put a character there. That means you yeah. move your characters for free. That's pretty sweet. It is sweet. And the John Silver that's a promo in the OP Such kit. Such a freaking good It card. has resist plus one, and it gains a lore for each uh, location in play. It's all cool. Jim Hawkins, I can say now that we have all locations, I will put Jim Hawkins as an A. Would you agree? Because he is very strategy dependent. He is strategy dependent. However. I think that strategy will be a little bit weaker. I than others. think it's still an A+. Plus. Either A+. Anthony, plus, what's your thoughts, man? A. A. You think it's A? A. I hate all, all right. of you. All right. <laughs> Give me my A+, plus, right. dang it. We're going to take a quick break while we get here from our sponsor, Meeple City, and we will come back at you with some Sapphire Fire. Hee <laughs> Stay tuned. This episode is also sponsored by Meeple City Games. Looking for a local game store in your four states area of Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma? Meeple City Games is the place for you. Stocking TCGs such as Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh!, One Piece, and Lorcana, Meeple City Games is your one-stop shop for all your TCG needs. Check out the link in the description below to check out their location. Meeple City Games, come join the fun. Thank you, Meeple City, and Josh and Lori, we love you guys, and thank you so much for sponsoring our channel. Yeah, check them out on TCG Player. They have a store there. They do, and they are in the process of 
finishing up their website. So it, it's going to be awesome. All right. So we have four more legendaries, the Sapphire and the Steel. This is the I will say the there's one. one right here. We do have to move a little bit faster through these because we've been taking a lot longer discussing Milo than I expected. But as we should have. the Sapphire legend that I I I saw this. There was a reveal on the official Discord. Rochelle, the community manager, the the community lead, yeah. she posted and said, if we can get 100 Sapphire emotes and 100 legendary emotes reactions on this, this uh, post, then I will reveal the Sapphire legend. And there was a summoning of the people. And it slowly built and built and built. And eventually we got there and we got a sweet grandma i love her almost as much as my own it's dang great. it's great the seven cost inkable grandma tala spirit of the ocean four strength eight willpower two lore shift five Blood, floodborne mentor floodborne mentor do you know who you are whenever a character is put into your or a character whenever a card Hard. is put into your inkwell gain one lore and she has the flavor text. She will always be with you, no matter how far your journey takes you. The artists are Jennifer Park and Ellie Horry. What a legendary card. This is one of those things, like, when we saw Jafar, I was like, man, Amethyst gets all the cool stuff. Yeah, you all, thought. All the cool stuff that just generically pays off what you want to do in card games. Amethyst gets it. I'm tired of it, man. Bro. And then Grandma Tala <laughs> came, and it saved Sapphire from mediocrity. It saved it. Sapphire has become my adopted other favorite ink, and it is Which a life is hilarious. Of, it's a life of pain because I'm so dependent on popsicles for my primary diet that I'm malnourished. And <laughs> I really need more ways to win the game than just, hey, ramp some. Hey, play some items. How about you just ramp? How about I just ramp and win the game? Period. Man? So this card, one of the things I love about it is when they don't add stipulations. I love that you just get lore just for inking on your turn. No extra ink. It's not when it's not the second time you ink each turn. It's not whenever you ink from the top of your deck. It's not whenever you play a song that makes you ink. It's whenever you put a card in your inkwell, gain a lore. They can't even play Let It Go against you if you're at 19 oh because it will give you one lore to win. What's the, your question? The, the card. Friend the, like me? Yes. Yeah, it's three oh lore. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. This card is busted. This card, this I don't want I don't advocate playing friend like me just yet. I think we need a little more synergy. But dude, that's but enough synergy. What right I love there. about this card is one of the more recent songs that was revealed, How Far I'll Go. Also in Sapphire, it's a four cost, uninkable yeah. song. It says that you can look at the top two cards of your deck, put one into your inkwell, one into your hand. That is a very solid playable song for ramp on its own yeah and the other grandma tala it's immediately a, better than uh than, than one, one jump, jump. Ahead. one jump's cheaper but and it comes in earlier which can be more valuable but i, I would argue that they, can, they technically play into each other yeah because you can ramp from two to four pretty easily but um the the ability of the other grandma tala she's a four drop inkable yeah that does the it's like develop your brain on her as an ability. Oh, yeah. And she doesn't put anything in your inkwell, but it's a really, really good shift target because you play her for four, and then you can... Next turn. Then you can play this on turn five. And what's beautiful is you can play on play her on four. You're not playing this on turn five. If you're playing if you're playing ramp, not this turn, is not turn. I mean five. on five ink. Yes. I mean, so you can basically play your Tala down, and on the very next turn, play this down. Oh, yeah. Then ink your card. Because you probably ramped on the prior turn anyways. Yes. Especially if you uh, got, I mean, technically you can't sing at the turn you play her. But either way, you can threaten so much with this card that like it's inevitability. It's a clock. And I love it. So yeah, I'm a huge fan. This is a really good card. Yeah, huge There's, fan. There is no getting around this. This is a great card. Yeah. Like this is... It makes Bell more playable. So because you can get two lore per turn. Yeah. No, Sapphire Steel, like I played against Sapphire Steel. I know for a fact that the, the deck is very good. Mm -hmm. I also built a version. And I am 100 percent convinced that my version is trash. Uh, <laughs> but this card, yeah, no. Uh, it's I have an S tier yeah, card. It's an S tier card. This this card, this and Jafar will warp the format around cards. Itself. Cards that gain lore 
are giving you what the game's all about. And when they can give you lore in a creative way, especially as, as much as it pains me in a way that's uninteractive, like I can't stop you from inking a card, it makes it tough. So she's going to have to be answered. It just so happens that there are a lot of ways to give ward yeah. uh, in Sapphire too. So it's something that I think is it's pretty scary. And at least Sapphire is getting something scary and it's not always Amethyst. All right, next card. Uh, this card is... It's not great. Um, so the the card is Lucky Dime. Uh, it's a seven drop, uninkable um, item. It, its ability is number one. It, it's exert and pay two. Choose a character of yours and gain lore equal to its its lore value. Which okay, cool. But my problem with this card is the fact that first off, it's a seven drop. Yeah. It, um. And there's a lot of there's a lot of item removal. That would be a huge tempo swing. Yeah. If you were to pop this. Now, I, I will say I'm I'm starting to see some cards that are able to like they're able to do things. They're mm -hmm. like trying and getting it out er earlier. Yeah, Scrooge McDuck, you can get an item for free, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like there are definitely cards mm -hmm. that that really like this card that are able to get it out sooner, if not for free. Mm -hmm. And that would be great. And if that's the direction that you go, awesome. I just, I don't think that there's enough like super ridiculously high lore uh, valued characters mm -hmm. that you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to use this. Lucky Dime pay time. Two, yeah. like Lucky Dime. The best combination with Lucky Dime is Magicka Dispel and Amethyst, where whenever she quests, you can gain lore equal to an item's cost. Yeah, that's creating. That's an, great. That's yeah. That's creating an amethyst sapphire item deck. However, I would say that she's also an uninkable seven cost floodborne. She um, she can be shifted out, but it's not like you are gonna have lucky dime out by the time you shift her out. You yeah, know, like, it's it's a developing combo, and they were very clever with how they worded it because technically you can't use this to then gain more lore because she has no lore on her. She only just gains lore. Yeah, equal. so. Yeah. This is mostly going to gain four lore in high lore situations. Yeah. And unless you're adding lore, like with Tamatoa or John Silver or something. But yeah, I think we can move on. Yeah. I think I would say Lucky Dime is a C minus. Yeah. It's, it, and, no. You don't, you dis, oh, you disagree. Oh, yes. you agree with C minus. Yeah. C minus. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a combo. If you can make it cheap or play it free reliably, other than Scrooge McDuck's, like make him banish something to play an item for free, yeah. then cool. Otherwise, well, yeah, yeah, I'm not no. sure. Okay, uh, okay. Mickey Mouse. <sighs> Mickey Mouse is a four-drop, uninkable, um, trumpeteer. Uh, props. Uh, he is a hero, dreamborn, and his ability... Oh, this is zero one, by the way. Yeah. Whew, those stats are egregious. Um, but its ability almost makes up for it. Uh, its ability is Bugle Call. It, it is exert, pay two, play a character for free. This is a trap card, just like Milo it, it, and my it opinion. Is, this is I, a trap card. I don't it disagree. Seems, it seems very cool on play. You're like, oh my gosh, this is going to make some stories at locals. This is going to make it at that kitchen table. When I play this, you know, in seven years, when I'm playing against my son and Lorcana on the kitchen table, I'm going to say, check out this Mickey Mouse. And he's going to go, whoa, oh my. Gosh. And I'm going to go, son, I only play this against you because you don't know to destroy it. <laughs> so, so it's, it's, uh, like you need to go away. Yeah, you can deal one damage just by coughing in the right direction in this game. And if you cock your head to the left yeah. and cough, it's gone. Luckily, in resist or in steel, you can have resist, which can make things a little trickier to deal damage to him and like get rid of him super easily. You can but give him a ward and you can give, yeah, like, I just, I can't think of a worse card to top deck at the end of the game than oh this my card. Gosh. Yeah. You're like, it, and I got something that enables me to play next turn. Okay. Yeah. It's so it's not not fun. It's, oh, it's not it's not good. It's fun though. It, it's it is a fun card. I think for that alone, it, it's okay. Yeah. Um you built a deck in Magic that had the Elvish Piper and it played stuff out for free oh yeah big stuff yeah big stuff yeah but which was fun but uh i gotta come in a four-player multiplayer game of lorcana this mickey mouse is like i'm a problem but but uh it 
other than He's that, not like, wrong. it creates a moment, but it's not like it's like, oh my gosh, you are so good at deck building because you play that card. Like, yes. No. <laughs> it's, it's not like that. It's, it, it's, uh, it's like, oh, you're here for fun. Yeah. Okay. It, it's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the card that you put in your Titans deck and hope that they don't look at the Mickey. They look at all the like yeah. giant Titans like, yeah. oh my gosh, this is all a problem. Yeah. You know, for a fact, someone's going to go, dude, I have a goofy knight in, knight in my hand, like the four lower one. Oh, yeah. The 10, 10. I have him in my hand. Just you wait, man. I'm going to play this Mickey. On turn five, I'm play a knight. And then they do it. And they go, bro, check it out. I got a nine cost goofy knight in play on turn five, dude. And they pass the turn and I dragon fire it. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. Yeah, his shield didn't block dragon fire. So it's oh just, my gosh. it is not going to work out the way you think, like Luke says in Last Jedi. <laughs> um, but I commend anyone who tries. I, I commend all people who try. It is a fun card. But as far as how we rank these cards so far, I would say this is a C. Bet worse than Hydra, better than Lucky Dime. I think uh, it's the same as Milo, but I. <laughs> what do you think? If it's the same as Milo, then it's a B. It's not the same as Milo. I think it's. I think Milo's the same as it. <laughs> that's, that's my that's, argument. But that, no. Okay. Uh, I I think. I think it'll see play. I, yeah. I I think that the card it's the ability by itself is really good. It's cool. The, yeah, the, but you can't the do problem, a dirty play. Yeah, that's the problem, problem is is that the card itself is just not great. And that's what we're evaluating. We're not evaluating the ability. We're evaluating but the we whole card. We are evaluating the ability. The whole we're, card. That's fine. It's a C. I, Anthony, you agree? I agree. <sighs> Man, Anthony's been agreeing with me all day. I love it. Tyler? And you know what? None of you None of you have played in a big tournament. None of you were invited to my birthday party. <laughs> Which, by the way, happy birthday, Ant. Yeah, happy birthday, Ant. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, last uh, legendary. Fine. C. Freaking We have over. Robin Hood, champion of Sherwood. He deserved to have a shift. Yes. This Five man cost. deserved to have a floodborn because he's had how many different versions of himself in this game already? A lot, but Simba has more, and he doesn't have a Floodborne. That's true. Five cost, Simba, inkable, three strength, six willpower, two lore, Floodborne hero with shift three. During your turn, whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, gain two lore. And is. the good of others. When this character is banished in a challenge, you may draw a card. So immediately, this is a better Taka. Immediately. Yeah. Because Taka pretty much had that first ability, and it did not see an ounce of play. Like a lick. I, I played it for like two seconds. And then you and regretted it, it and you took it out of your deck. Yeah, I took it out. It's just not enough in a challenge-focused situation. Now, because locations are coming out, we may have more challenges occurring because challenging is the primary way people are probably going to get rid of locations. Yes. However, I will say with Robin Hood, Taka would have been miles better if it had the second ability, which is when it's banished, it replaces itself. It has to be in a challenge. But typically when you're challenging and exerting, you invite yourself to be banished in a challenge. Yeah, for sure. Because you take damage, you make yourself more juicy of a target, so you get challenged back and you get removed. This Robin Hood is very cool. I I think it's like baseline. Like This is like tragic hero level of like, on my initial evaluation of like, that's a solid card right there. That's playable. Yeah. Good stats, good lore, good ability. I, not like breaking the game or yeah, anything. Yeah, I, 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 think it's, I think it's good. Yeah, I, I don't think that it's amazing. I don't think that it's like I. I know that it's going it to probably like a, see play like Maleficent. Uh, it's just good. No, this because better? Male, I think no. I think Maleficent is better. Okay. Uh, I I, think I would say this, this is, is a solid. A. I would say a solid B plus. B plus. Uh, and and part of the reason for that is because I don't want to say that it's a B. Yeah. But I also don't want to say that it's an A because okay. it's not an A. What do you think, Anthony? That's tough because I was thinking, I was thinking A minus or B plus. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. How, how about this? My last pitch for A from you, Tyler. Okay. Okay. Is this puppy, this fox here? Okay. Has a a two two one cost Robin Hood that he can shift onto. Right. So you could play this on turn three or turn two. Right? No, turn three. You can play this on turn three. With three strength, he more than likely will have the ability to challenge and banish any two-cost character that's exerted. By that time, they probably have exerted it because they've quested with it. 
or the one cost. So on turn three, you have the possibility of putting a 3-6 out, challenging, removing something on their board, getting two lore for it, and saying, okay, if you want to crack back, because he maybe has four willpower left now, if you want to crack back, give me a card to replace it. Is that not worth it to you? Not on an A? Like a solid board control card. Uh, I mean, if anything, Maleficent might, she, she's an A, and she might just get dragon fired and never have any benefits. You know what I mean? Okay. The point at which he can impact the board to me is like, that's a I, good card, man. I see it. For, okay. the, for, the, for the reason why Maleficent is an A, yeah. I feel like the reason why this card probably deserves to be an A is strictly from the fact that it is a Floodborne. Yeah. And it has the ability to come down early. Yeah. It like came it, down early. If, it, if it didn't have that ability. Or if, if it, it had was, bad shift targets. Then yeah, you would say like, "Ooh, I don't, I don't know yeah, about that." Yeah, that's, that's yeah. pretty trash. No, no. So we're gonna is... give it an A, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, we got them, folks. We got them. All right. So quickly to rank all the Floodborns, we have in S tier. We're not gonna order all the tiers. Just S tier. We have Jafar, and we have Grandma Tala. Yep. In the A tier, we have Ursula at the A plus, Perdita A, Maleficent A, Jim Hawkins A, Robin Hood A. In the B tier, still think tier, Jim Hawkins should be an A plus. Hey, we'll see. In the B tier, we have Milo Thatch, which I disagree with, but it's what it is. Kita at, at B minus, and then in the C tier, we have Hydra at C plus, Mickey Mouse at C, and Lucky Dime at C minus. So there are your ready set live Lu rankings. Lucky Dime, you were almost the D. I will say, like we said at the very beginning, all of these legends are sweet. I like all the cards at face value. It's just you got to rank them somehow, you know? And I think that we are in for a treat with the amount of deck building these cards enable. Oh, yeah. That's going to be great. Yeah. All right. So we are going to get one quick mailbag question after a quick break from our sponsor, Texarkana Podcast Studio. This episode is also sponsored by Texarkana Podcast Studio. Wanting to start your very own podcast or voice web series? Well, Texarkana Podcast Studio is the place for you. Whether it's true crime, sports, murder mystery, or a fun card game you want to talk about with your friends, Texarkana Podcast Studio is here for all of your recording needs. Check out the link in the description below to schedule your first session today. Texarkana Podcast Studio, where your voice is heard. Thank you so much, Texarkana Podcast Studio, for hosting us in this wonderful space and giving us this quality we could not get on our own. On our own. Uh, on our own. Yeah. We can't fix my voice, but we can fix the equipment. Okay. We have our mailbag portion, and because we are crunched for time, I'm going to try my best to answer questions underneath the post on X and underneath the YouTube uh, community post, but we are going to go formerly ahead. known as Twitter. Yeah, we are going to go ahead and answer one question from X, formerly known as Twitter, from Why Breezy, a fellow content creator, high energy Cusco loving content creator. Why Breezy asks, "Which enchanted are you chasing, and why is it Kita?" Kita's enchanted, by the way, is phenomenal. Very good. It is a beautiful card. However, Tyler. What's the enchanted you're chasing? When you open it in a pack, what would be your ideal enchanted? And why is it Kita? Well, it definitely is not Kita uh, <laughs> because it ain't going to be from Atlantis. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, no, the card that I'm going to be searching for desperately in all the enchanteds is going to be Morph Space Goo. What and a beautiful why? card. why? Because it's freaking beautiful. Dude, Jared from Citizens of Lorcana edited morph to be in that piece of art you know where like god is touching david's finger yes. or whatever it's like they're each touching each other's fingertips and they're reaching oh for each other gosh. it's morph reaching back so it was it was beautiful morph it playing four enchanted morphs would be the dream oh in a deck. that is the dream and it's such such a good the painted and, brush art style of all these enchanted is thought, so good and here i thought that some some accidental curlies Mixed in with your crinkle fries was the dream. <laughs> but no, it's, it's playing morph. four morph. It's playing four morph that are all enchanted. Ah, uh, be now, great. Anthony, have you seen the enchanteds? Yes, I just looked at them. Okay. What is your chase enchanted? Jafar, hands down. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. So the Jafar enchanted. Looks I fire. love the art of regular Jafar. That's what kills me. Because I think it's Nicholas Aviori did the art for Jafar. I'll remember that name forever. That art on its own, it's kind of like Brave Little Taylor. Like if they would have given an Enchanted in set one and it wasn't Nicholas Cole, I would have been like, ah, I don't know about that. 
because this this art's already iconic. But the the styling of the Enchanted that you're talking about is like it's a different styling. It's not so crisp. It's like the painted brush, the pose he's in. That's very you, and I get it. I get it. it's like very powerful and confident. I get Anthony vibes from that card for sure, and also monetary reasons. Oh. <laughs> It's play, no. a playable Enchanted, too. That'd be, yeah. So mine, as a sucker for Nicholas Cole, and as oh, a... Oh, dear gosh. Yeah, Tyler's just now looking at Jafar. <sighs> my, it's so pretty. My Chase Enchanted is Ursula, Deceiver of All. If you are watching this podcast at all, Nicholas Cole, at all, John Lauren. Once again, we see I have you. learned that they tossed this card back and forth and made iterations and changes, and so they got it just right. Guys, you don't need to do any more tossing. This thing is perfect. And I'm glad that you reached what you did. I don't know what iterations it went through, but every part of this card, down to Flotsam and Jetsam, how they look, the microphone made of the seashell, twisting and twirling, the, the, the swirls of green ink behind her, the whole framing of the card is beautiful. And the card also, like Anthony said, happens to be pretty playable. So yeah. I love... The can, styling can can we just can we go ahead just real quick and yeah. throw an audible honorable mention to Chernabog? Oh Evil yeah, doer. Chernabog is the first card in Enchanted. The Enchanted Chernabog. It's the first card that I looked at and said, "Is that a Lorcana card?" Because it looks it, is. it looks like menacing, and it's immediately like, "Beware my evil intentions." I it's, almost stopped looking at Enchanted when I stopped when I saw that one. I was yeah. like, "Okay, that's the one." Yeah, I'll just look at the other ones just to yeah. You know. Chern Chernobog is legit. It's weird to me to see Chernobog and Amber because it's like the color of togetherness, but he's like, yeah, togetherness of all things evil. It's, I'm it, a villain through and through. Yeah. And trust me, you're going to hate me when yeah. I'm done. Well, I am so sorry we could not get more, to more mailbags, guys. We just are really crunched on time. Uh, I, like I said, I'll try to answer every question we can in the comments and reply to all your questions that you asked. Hopefully that's enough of an apology from me. But... We have to sign out the show. We appreciate Anthony for joining us on the mic. Hey, oh, we appreciate, producer. I love. appreciate you, Tyler, for joining I me today. I appreciate you. Thank you. I was not fishing for that compliment, but, but I you know what? It I regardless. gave it to you anyway. Hopefully, we can get better. We're not coughing and sniffling so much. Yeah. By next the next week. time we record, next time we record, by the time you watch this episode, into the Inklands is like a couple days away, hopefully. Because hopefully we get it out before oh, that episode right. releases. We're on a little bit of an uh, editing delay right now, but a little bit. Um, I wish you all the best. I wish you good pulls in your Inkland stuff because you definitely won't hear from us before Inklands comes yeah, out. Yeah, no. You Again. might hear from us during. Yeah. Like at least on, on yeah. X, yeah. formerly known as Twitter. Yeah. But until so, then, as always, Digital Me, take us out. Thanks again, guys, for listening to Ready, Set, Live. If you could, like and share the content and subscribe to the channel, as well as hitting that notification bell for updates on when we post new content. Don't forget to leave a comment as we check for any questions that you guys might have, as well as things to add to our mailbag portion of the podcast. And who knows? Maybe your question will be answered in the next episode. And thanks again to Texarkana Podcast Studio for their contribution in making this episode possible. As always, this is the crew from Ready, Set, Draw, ending our turn. Ready, set, draw.